What's cracking, big dog? Yeah, yeah, it's Thursday. Why are you yelling? Why am I yelling? I'm yelling because I'm excited because we're doing a little mock draft action. I haven't done a mock draft in hot minute. Speaking of a hot minute, the draft is about to start in hot minute. We are doing this draft on drafters.com. As you can see in the middle section of the screen, all the way down at the bottom, bottom, bottom. But we got some information about signing up for drafters. If y'all were tuned in last summer, we did a ton of drafts on FanDuel's app called Draft. They are no longer a thing, so we had to get our best ball fix elsewhere, and drafters.com stepped up in a big, big way. They saw a gap in the marketplace, same way that Big Dog sees a gap in the marketplace, and we're fucking hammering that shit. So drafters.com is where we are doing all of our best ball drafts for the 2020 fantasy football season. So if you want to draft with myself, if you want to, I mean, all the guys on the Big Dogs team are doing drafts on drafters all the time. Uh, here's what I would do. I would sign up on drafters.com. They also have a mobile app, but I would do most of the drafts if you could on the computer. Add me right here. My username is Nick BDGE. Once you add me, I'll, I'll send out invites every time I start a draft. Now, this is going to be a 12-teamer. This is going to be half PPR, and this is a double quarterback. I accidentally kept the defensive slot in there, which is actually kind of a cool thing about drafters is that everything is extremely customizable. Like when you start a league, when you create a league, you could do it with any draft settings. You could do full PPR, half PPR standard. You could fucking do 17 quarterbacks starting if you wanted to which I think I might start fucking around and doing that just to steal people's money. You could do the buy-ins at whatever prices uh, you want to do it. So right now we have C-Max, Saquon Barkley going off the board. I think those are the obvious choices. We are starting three running backs. So there is a little twist in this as compared to some other um, some other mock drafts you might see. So we're starting three running backs. We're starting three wide receivers, one tight end, one defense, double quarterback. So this is actually going to be an interesting twist. But as I always say with the mock drafts, Listen to what I'm saying, not or listen to the player analysis I give, not necessarily the uh, team that I end up drafting. So I'm going to go ahead and fuck around and take Alvin Kamara at the 103. Now, some of you guys might think that might be a little bit too high for the Saints running back. I am on board with, listen, I like Zeke here. I like Dalvin Cook here. I like Kamara here. And you'll see my rankings probably fluctuate. I think they're all in the same tier together. I am not looking too much into the difference between the three players because I think they all present. Uh, let me just make sure this is half PPR. Yes, it is half PPR. Uh, Kamara, I'm willing to wipe out any any bad notations from him last season as an effect as a side effect from the high ankle sprain. He was basically, I think he was actually the single most elusive running back in the NFL prior to suffering the high ankle sprain. I think in terms of um, missed tackles force, elusive rate, PFF player profiler. For the first few weeks when he was on uh, on the Saints healthy, he was the most elusive running back in the NFL. As soon as he got hurt, that number dropped. He became like the 45th most elusive back. So I'm willing to chalk up almost all of the down uh, parts of last season for Alvin Kamara to the fact it was a high ankle sprain. You could see towards the end of the season when he finally, finally started getting healthy. Both him and Saquon got healthy around the same time. They both started balling out again at the end of the season. Uh, nothing has really changed in New Orleans. They still have Drew Brees. They're still going to run Kamara out of the slot or out wide on like 30 to 35% of his plays. So he is penciled in there for that, you know, 75 to 80 reception mark as he has done year in and year out. Kamara at the 103, don't even think about it. So I get a lot of questions about Michael Thomas too. Like, would you take him before any of the running backs? And the way things are shaping up right now, half PPR, definitely not. If it's full PPR, I think you know, he definitely enters the conversation. The The problem I have with Michael Thomas is wide receivers don't necessarily separate. In the same reason that we like kind of wait on quarterbacks in fantasy, especially if you're in a one quarterback league, the, a lot of guys don't separate themselves. Like you can be, you could finish as the quarterback six or seven, but the points per game difference between the quarterback six, seven and like the quarterback uh, you know, 16 and 17, not that big of a difference in points per game. And we see that a lot with wide receivers as well. Even the top tier guys, they don't really separate themselves that much from like the wide receiver 12, 13, 14, 15. Whereas an elite upside running back is what separates your fantasy team. Like those are at the end of the day, what wins your fantasy league. So we're seeing fantasy players become a lot more, you know, smart and privy to the fact that this is the case. And this is why we're going to see a ton of, um, running backs rip off the board quickly. I'm going to change this over to the board view. So hopefully you guys can see that. Oh, what am I doing here? Let me fuck around with the designs so that you guys can see me a little bit better. Yeah. Yeah. So again, we're on drafters and this is a best ball draft. So for those of y'all unaware of the best ball draft, 
it's it's a league that you join and these are all buy-in you're paying this is a one dollar buy-in league so everyone is taking it seriously so if you want to actually practice for your drafts if you want to fuck around and see where guys are really getting picked based on like real clear adp this is the place to do it because you do pay to play in these leagues as little as a dollar actually since it is so customizable you customizable you could do it for as little as fucking 50 cents so this is in my opinion the best place to do so right now um and I forget what the fuck I was even saying, but this is a very realistic point of, of drafting here on Drafters. So you can come join me on Drafters, drafters.com. If you use the promo code BDGE when you sign up, whatever you put in, if you throw 10 bucks in, which will uh, essentially get you into 10 different drafts, you could do a t- fuck ton of practicing over the next month or two months. Uh, use promo code BDGE. You will get $15 to play with instead of just the 10. So you'll get 50% sign up bonus. If you use promo code BDGE, and once you do, just add me, Nick BDGE, and I'll invite you to all the leagues that I'm in. And uh, first come, first serve, though. Got to have them fucking itchy fangas. So Michael Thomas, that's what I was talking about. The, I don't think the top wide receivers separate themselves enough, which is why I lean running back heavy. And you'll see so many running backs go off the board. I think I accidentally set this draft up like a couple hours ago. So some people might have forgotten that it was going right now. And it's why we're seeing the, the times go down a little bit. And everyone's kind of auto drafting at this point. Um, but it's only 40 second per pick. So we'll start to see some guys go off the board, maybe a little bit earlier than we would have um, typically seen. Point being is it's so running back heavy that if you do pass up running backs early on and go with wide receivers, I think you end up regretting it pretty heavily later on in the draft because the wide receiver position is extremely filled with depth, man. Like third, fourth, fifth, sixth round, so many good wide receivers that you can grab. So uh, early take, like, of course, you want Michael Thomas on your team. But the way that drafts are kind of shaking up and I'll do a bunch of draft strategy videos of what I'm seeing, the different trends that are going on in fantasy, because I do a ton of these mock drafts and I do them throughout the entirety of the offseason. So as the months go by, um, as the months go by, you'll see different trends that take place and I will cover them as I do these videos. So, again, Wide receiver early, not the best move to do in 2020. I also want to apologize because I do these. I'm, I'm going to preface with an apology in case any weird fucking text messages pop up throughout these. I do these live. I don't edit them afterwards. The mock drafts, at least the other videos, of course, I edit. But the mock drafts, I don't edit because it's a screen recording and it's weird to edit. So if any weird fucking text messages pop up in the top right corner, I don't actually know if you'll see them. But sometimes I get some fucking there's, there's some real freaks out here, fellas. Fellows and fellettes. Is that a word? Fellettes? Homies and homettes. Fella, fellas and fellettes. I'm going to call y'all fellettes. The two girls in my audience, y'all are fellettes from now on. So we got Aaron Jones, Nick Chubb, DeAndre Hopkins at 12, Joe Mixon at the turn at 13, Kenyon Drake, Julio Jones, Travis Kelsey. So we're actually seeing a decent amount of wide receivers go off pretty early. Lamar Jackson, wow, it is, a, it is two quarterbacks. So the fact that Lamar Jackson fell all the way to 17. Uh, the thing with best ball, if you're unfamiliar with best ball, sorry, I should have covered this before. What it does is you draft a large team. So we're actually going to draft 18 rounds today. And based on the starting lineup, as you see, two quarterbacks, three running backs, three wide receivers, one tight end, one defense, it starts the best players automatically, like the software on drafters.com. And this was the same as anywhere that does basketball. It automatically starts the best players on your team in that individual week. So if you drafted six running backs, the best three running backs that week are going to be inserted into your starting lineup, and then you get those points. So... The way it works for Superflex is necessarily Lamar Jackson obviously has a lot of value because he's a great fantasy player, but you could always rack up three quarterbacks that are, you know, quarterback 12 to 18 ranks. And then two of them, as long as they finish like top 10, you're going to have two very good slots in the quarterback range. So um, that's why I think we'll see quarterbacks and and guys like uh, Lamar Jackson and like Patrick Mahomes is falling too. So I might take him here, but I might even pass on him here just because the running back, the running back situation gets very dire. Like I, I see Austin Eckler in his own tier right now of the guys left. And since we are starting three running backs, which is not necessarily a, a normal thing, like they're they're a little bit more valuable than people in this draft. I think are giving credit for. So I'm actually going to go with Eckler here, just to shore up that second running back spot. Because again, once if 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 I don't take if I skip on a running back here at 27, by the time I get to 46 and 51, I'm looking at really really poor options for running backs and the and the the um the depth there, the tiers are, are such a big drop off as compared to like, you know, I skip on Patrick Mahomes there. I'm still going to be able to get probably Kyler at the 27 or like Russell Wilson, but worst case scenario, wide receivers, there's still a lot of good guys on the board. So I, I, I tend to go with running backs early 
And with Austin Eckler, you know, I, I talk a lot about all of these these early round running backs in my uh, oh my god, Brand, you just took Leonard Fournette to piss me off. I've, I know it, I know it. I feel like sometimes when I tell people that we're doing uh, a draft that's going to be on YouTube, they just do things to fucking try to trigger me. Leonard Fournette trigger finger fire. That's what that was. Um, Austin Eckler, is, he's going to be fine. He's going to be a very good, solid fantasy player for you. Getting him all the way at twenty two at the two ten, I'm ecstatic about that because. Melvin Gordon leaving, yes, it opens up competition behind Austin Eckler, but Eckler is another guy like Kamara who runs a huge percentage of his routes from the slot or from out wide. Just a huge percentage of the snaps overall that he has as a player come out wide or from the slot. So um, he's going to be a part of their game plan. He's not going to be the workhorse. No one thinks that he's going to be getting 20 to 25 touches. As long as he can get his 15 to 18, you know, four or five receptions a game, Eckler is going to be a beast. Uh, his touchdowns might come down, sure, but like he is, he's shown through three years that he's one of the most efficient players in the NFL uh, with the ball in his hands. All right, so we had oh, Patrick Mahomes was taken, huh? I thought he fell to me there. So this is where, you know, like I don't like any of these running backs in this tier. It's way too early. I probably have to wait till 46 to even consider any of these guys. We have a few wide receivers that I like. I'm really, really in on DJ Moore. Uh, I don't like any of the tight ends this early. Kyler Murray makes a lot of sense here, I think. But again, like since you can just draft three quarterbacks later on, I might just hammer a quarterback with like my 51, 70, 75 picks and be okay there and, you know, not skip on these top tier of wide receivers. So I'm going to grab DJ Moore as my wide receiver one here and pass up on Kyler, which I might end up regretting later on. But I, 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 f I feel like DJ Moore is still being slept on, man. For, for, the, for the level of consistency that he showed as a fantasy producer – week in and week out with really poor quarterback play, man. Like I, I'm, I'm ecstatic to see what uh, the Panthers do this offense with Joe Brady and Matt rule do in Carolina this year. I mean, we're talking about how we like C-Mac with all the new changes coming in, right? We have Joe Brady who ran that LSU offense, which was absolutely prolific. One of the best offenses in the, uh, in the NFL last year. Ooh, good stack right there by, by Davis. I totally forgot Clyde Edwards Lair was on the board he's got Dalvin Cook Josh Jacobs Clyde Edwards great fucking star for him um Brady was a guy who knows how to use his fucking weapons and everybody was producing at like a ridiculously high rate last year in the LSU offense DJ Moore is going to be the clear-cut one there and he was already so consistent and now you factor that in with the defense of Carolina they are going to be fucking miserable no more Luke Keekley, no more James Bradbury, no more fucking half of their team is gone. So I don't they're going to be honestly we might get some defensive points out of DJ Moore. He might be fucking trotted out there to play on the other side of the ball. So if you if you play IDP, DJ Moore, I don't know, is he like going to be this year's Jalen Samuels or he gets to play multiple positions in fantasy because they're going to need the help on defense. And uh and and DJ Moore is going to be someone who benefits from that because they're going to give up. I mean, look at the off the 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 division they're playing in. New Orleans Saints, the Bucks renewed with Tom Brady and the Falcons. All three of those teams are going to score a shit ton of points, and they're going to do it pretty easily against Carolina. So you have six games that I see being high scoring right off the rip, and I'm sure a lot of the other games will be as well. Uh, for DJ Moore to just you know finally take that step up in the touchdown category, but I think the volume is still going to be really, 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 really high in Joe Brady's offense. So I, I'm I'm really all in on DJ Moore. I'm being I'm fine with DJ Moore as my wide receiver one. Um, even if you're getting him as like the wide receiver 11 or whatnot, I think he'll produce consistently for you as a as a high end option there. Uh, really like Adam Thielen going that late, too. So we're seeing Whitney take a very, very different approach. And we'll we'll monitor this as we go. Same thing with we have Westron. We have Whitney. So Westron went Michael Thomas, Chris Godwin, Odell Beckham. Whitney went Tyree Kill, Travis Kelsey, Keenan, Keenan Allen, and then Adam Thielen. Neither of those guys got the running backs. So we'll see as the draft progresses. Like, what do they end up doing at running back? And we'll see how poor their running back options become. Because, listen, you got to start three running backs. So if they wait, on, if they keep waiting on running back and their, their running back one is going to be like fucking James White, Darius Geis, and fucking Jordan Howard, like, they're going to be in trouble. Like, there's no way they're going to win this uh, this league. Help. Uh, is that help? Heat 89? Heat 89? I don't fucking know. Um, he went two tight ends, stacked the Lamar Jackson Andrews little little sandwich there. I like that a lot, actually. I think in best ball, stacking is always a very, very, very good idea. So whatever quarterback you have, try to, as long as it's like an actual good option and you're getting them at good value, try to stack their wide receiver one or their tight end. Um, I remember doing best ball drafts last year and a lot of the 
significance around, you know, there's not a lot of stats out there for best ball, to be honest with you, in terms of like evaluation and what makes your best ball team win. But again, these videos are really more so to just help you prepare for your, your redraft leagues and your, and your season long leagues. Um, I think that, uh, I think that I'm on the clock. Todd Gurley just went off the clock. So we have, we're at the end of the fourth ish round. Let me see what, Oh, Kyler Murray's still on the board. Fuck. Yeah. You shitting me. All right, so I, I skipped on Kyler Murray. Turned out to be a great fucking pick. And, and again, guys, this is actually like people paid to play in this league. So uh, we're starting two quarterbacks, and Kyler Murray just fell to me at the 46th pick, which is unbelievable, but also it matters because we, we have a buy-in here, and someone's going to win money in this league. And again, if y'all want to compete with myself or people in the Big Dogs community, uh, use promo code BDGE when you sign up on drafters.com. Throw in 10 bucks, you'll get an extra five bucks when you do so. You could also join the Discord channel. I forgot to plug that. So people are starting drafts left and right. If you want to do regular mock drafts, if you want to do best ball drafts, if you join the Discord channel, which I will link, it'll be linked right in the description right below this video. Uh, completely free to join. Join the Discord channel. We have about 2,000 fucking people in there that uh, are extremely engaging and are starting drafts and talking about trade advice. And if you're in Dynasty, they got shit going on like all the fucking time. So, um, Get into the Discord channel. In there, I will post a link to a lot of these drafts, but also just add me on here, Nick BDGE, and I'll invite you via the app. You'll get a notification on your computer and on the app when this does happen. So I went with Kyla Murray as my quarterback one, then Dak went off the board. So I was thinking about going with Dak here as the quarterback two. I don't hate the idea of, of stacking up Russell Wilson here either. I'm trying to see what running backs we have on the board. And y'all saw my video probably last week about how I actually really like Melvin Gordon. He is my running back 16. I believe in my rankings, maybe 15. Um, and I think he's not a terrible pick here because I, I still think there are going to be some really good wide receivers that we can stack up towards the end of the draft. So I'm going to get my third running back in Melvin Gordon. I think that this offensive line in Denver is extremely underrated. They're going to be a much more pass-heavy offense, and we've seen that Melvin Gordon has proven over the last bunch of years that he is – uh, a very good pass catcher. And on the flip side, Lindsey and Royce Freeman, I mean, I don't even know why I'm wasting my breath on Freeman, but um, Royce Freeman has been so bad in the passing game. And Philip Lindsey has been actually uh, pretty bad himself. You, you you think about Lindsey and you think about his size, like you, you see him as like a smaller scat back explosive guy, and you assume that he's just very good in the passing game. Um, you assume he's very good in the passing game, but that has not been the truth the truth he's been like outside of the top 25 in yards per route run uh i don't oh you guys didn't see that text message perfect perfect you can't fucking put me in a coffin when these text messages come through <laughs> so um sorry um where were we? Where were we? Melvin Gordon. Yeah, I think the offensive line uh, has been upgraded. They they add Graham Glasgow. They use uh, a few draft picks on on offensive linemen. They signed some other guy, McGovern. So they've got some. Re oh no, did McGovern go to the Jets? I don't know. But the Broncos made an upgrade in their offensive line this summer, and they were already pretty good. I mean, you look at any of the ranking services, PFF, Football Outsiders. They all are already ranked plus in the run blocking category. Now you add Melvin Gordon. I think Melvin Gordon's going to catch a ton of passes there. I think he's going to be used as a satellite back, but also an early down thumper, and probably get a lot of the goal line work. This is an offense that's trying to compete with KC. They're going to try to make it high powered, at least throw the ball a lot, which I think favors Melvin Gordon. So I really like here, like him here as my running back three. Now we're starting to see these wide receivers where they were such good values, you know, a couple of weeks ago. They're all starting to creep up. The Adam Thielen's, the Calvin, I mean, dude, those fourth round of wide receivers, Adam Thielen, Calvin Ridley, Cooper Cup. I mean, they are absolutely deadly, but I like the fifth round just as much too. Like DJ Chark, Terry McLaurin. I see McLaurin starting to creep up. He was, uh, his ADP for a while was legit at like the, the back end of the sixth rounds, so like the 608. But obviously all these drafts that I do with people in my audience, they know how much I like Terry. Therefore, I never get my guys. She was like the fucking bane of my existence doing drafts with you guys. As much as I love engaging with y'all, doing real drafts means I never get guys that I like. And it hurts my fucking heart. It really does. I love y'all, but also fuck y'all. Okay, okay, okay. So Robert Woods goes off the board. He's one of the best fucking six round value. I mean, I don't understand how Robert Woods can keep getting disrespected like this. Like we, Brandon Cooks is not there. This is going to be the Robert Woods show. He was so good down the stretch last year. Him in the sixth round might single-handedly be the bet, you know, I, I said Terry McLaurin was, but now he's going 15 spots earlier than he was just a week ago. 
Robert Woods might single-handedly be the, the best value there. And this game's going to height. He's still fading the running back position. So he's got Devontae Adams, Cortland Sutton, Robert Woods, Ertz, Andrews. I, I, I think it's cool to double up on tight ends and, and super flex. It's an interesting strategy. But if we're starting one tight end, I almost think you're wasting an early round pick if you're going to take both of them. Um, Should have probably gone with a running back there in my humble ass opinion. So Westron went four wide receivers and he finally takes his first running back, David Montgomery, which I think is a fantastic value play all the way down here at 68 because the Bears added absolutely nothing to that fucking backfield. So David Montgomery, Montgomery's uh, you know, competition for competition for work is is like unmatched in the NFL. No one's going to have an easier path to work than him. So now we have myself back up on the clock. Tom Brady just goes off the board. I would have actually liked to have grabbed him there. Let's see who we got, man. I, I really like Debo Samuel here at the end of the sixth round. Jarvis Landry, eh, I'm not too, too sold on him. I'm, I think I'm going to go with Debo Samuel here. I think that. Yeah, I'm going to go with Debo. He, he, I feel like Debo was so, so fucking good down the stretch last year, and he's being wildly underrated. Like, for, I think his ceiling is so much higher than people are giving him credit for. And let me see if I could pull up some stats. Like, we look at Debo, and Debo was an absolute animal last year. Um, like, once he took over as, like, a full-time role guy. I mean, he went for almost 1,000 yards from scrimmage last year. He went for... 861, if my math is correct, six touchdowns. I look at like the second half of the, the year, 112 yards, 134 yards, and then the rushing yardage like got nuts by the end of the year. And I think, I mean, they're going to continue to use that part of his game. Like look at uh, the game logs from weeks 13 down to the Super Bowl. He was getting almost multiple carries per game. And when you give wide receivers carries, they tend to make them extremely efficient carries and really boost that that floor yardage because they're always like end of rounds and they always get tons of space. It's just how it's schemed into Kyle Shanahan's offense. So like, Look at a lot of these games down the stretch. I think he went super, super, he's super, super underrated, man. I mean, the game logs are huge. The yardage are huge. He's clearly a big part of this offense. Um, so we went with Debo, and I'm glad I did because it looks like a lot of the next tier of wide receivers are starting to go off the board. And I was debating whether or not to take my second quarterback, and now I could do so. So for me, it's between Josh Allen, Carson Wentz, Matt Ryan, Baker Mayfield, Daniel Jones. I will take we got Kyler. Uh, I'm going to go with a more pass-friendly quarterback in Matt Ryan I just I, nothing really changes in Atlanta again the same kind of point that I made for DJ Moore in that passing offense like Atlanta has to go against Carolina who has a terrible defense they go against New Orleans who are going to score a lot of points they go against Tampa Bay who's going to score a lot of points uh, and they're always going to be in shootout mode because Dirk Cutter sucks ass and he doesn't know how to run an efficient offense but he runs a very high powered passing offense Julio Jones Calvin Ridley I think is is in for a major major breakout this year uh, I love the addition of Hayden Hurst low key. They they are not going to have a running game one because of Cutter and two because Todd Gurley is going to be the guy and he's should never be the guy anymore in in an offense. So uh, I, I like Matt Ryan. I think the volume is just going to be there even if he's not as as efficient as he's always been because I don't think this offense is going to run that smoothly. Uh, he's going to put up some big numbers. So let me know what y'all thinking about the team so far. We have Alvin Kamara. Austin Eckler, DJ Moore, Kyler Murray, Melvin Gordon, Debo Samuel, Matt Ryan. I actually fuck with this team a lot. I think it's a, a really solid blend of upside, tons of passing usage. And I love the fact that I got Kyler in the fourth and Matt Ryan in the seventh, which is definitely not something you typically see in Superflex. I have not touched a tight end position because I, I think another incredible value is Evan Ingram going down here in the seventh, seventh and eighth round. After dudes like Julian Edelman, after Michael Gallup's like, I understand the injury concern with Evan Ingram. If you're going to draft Ingram, draft him in the seventh or eighth round and then draft another tight end that you see all the way down here, like a Jono Smith or a Jack Doyle or a Gesicki or a Blake Jarwin or a Dallas Goddard. Like any of these fucking guys will be fine to fill in if Evan Ingram gets hurt. And if Evan Ingram doesn't get hurt, guess what? You got a top five fantasy tight end on your roster for the price of, you know, like a fucking eighth round pick. So I really like Ingram and he's been a guy that I'm, I've, I've been investing a lot into, especially in best ball drafts. So I'll probably target him if he does end up dropping here, which is pretty far, but I'm, I'm a hopeful dude. So we've cleared up our top three running backs, which is a pretty good feeling given that we have to start three of them each week. I still think there's really good wide receiver value on the board. Like Hollywood Brown, I absolutely love. Highly doubt he falls to me. Um, Christian Kirk, I, I like too. This is going to be a very high-powered offense. And again, I want to stack players. So Kyler Murray and Christian Kirk is a nice little stack there. 
Uh, people are just completely forgetting about Christian Kirk because DeAndre Hopkins is there. But this is a team that's going to pass the ball a lot. This is a team that's going to run with all their wide receivers on the field a lot. Christian Kirk has proved to be a very good wide receiver, too, in the offense. And uh, I think I think we'll see that you know play itself out this year. And I'm, I'm actually very excited about uh, Christian Kirk. So I'm hoping that we could stack up a Christian Kirk and a Deontay Johnson at 94 and 99. I love Deontay Johnson. I think if I've, if I've ever been as confident in someone breaking out, it's Deontay Johnson. Like everything that I'm seeing, um, you know, I already love the dude, but like he had four top 10 fantasy wide receiver finishes last year with a horrible, horrible quarterback play. Like that is extremely impressive. Like while while we all want to discount Juju Smith uh, Schuster's year last year, how come how come we can just say Juju did terrible and Deontay Johnson was so good? But it doesn't count because he had bad court. Like, if we're going to exponentially just ship away Juju's bad year, shouldn't we exponentially pump up Deontay Johnson's good year? Like, that, as a rookie, I mean, he led all rookies in, was it, I, I believe he led all rookies in catches. Um, he was, like, number three in target separation, and he was not a slot guy. This was a, I think, a Graham Barfield stat. I think he found that, like, Deontay Johnson ranked third or maybe, like, second in uh, target separation, like, at, at the time of the target for Deontay Johnson, like he was always separated from his defender. He's a fantastic route runner. He was not running from the slot. And most slot receivers get the separation really easily because guys play off them. They don't play them on the line of scrimmage in the slot. So the fact that he did that on the outside while running like 80% of his routes on the outside is extremely impressive. Matt Harmon did his write-up uh, reception perception for the fantasy footballers draft kit. He absolutely loved Deontay Johnson too. He was up our upper percentile. I really think that Deontay Johnson is like going to be, you know, 70 to 80% of what Antonio Brown was for this offense. And Big Ben's going to absolutely lure him. Uh, so we saw Marquise Brown go off the board. We saw Evan Ingram go off the board. So those, those guys were my target. And I talked about Christian Kirk and I talked about, um, Deontay Johnson. So we're going to go with Kirk and assume that Johnson falls to me after that. I wouldn't even really hate because the the values of quarterbacks like really drop in best ball a little bit in super flex. I wouldn't even hate getting a third quarterback on the turn. If if Deontay Johnson goes off the board here within the next four picks, I, I think I might double dip and get my third quarterback just to shore up that spot. Because if you know if, if you're starting two quarterbacks in best ball, you have to have a third one because there's going to be bye weeks. There are going to be injuries. There are going to be busts. So Whatever position you're looking at, the number of like starting spots week in and week out, you have to have a lot more than that. So tight ends, if there's one, sometimes I'll draft two, sometimes I'll draft three. Quarterbacks, if there's two, I think you have to have at least three starting quarterbacks, three NFL starting quarterbacks um, to outset anything that might come from like injury or bust or whatever I said before. Marvin Jones is a guy that I don't know. I, I'm having a lot of trouble buying into Marvin Jones just because I'm, I'm I'm pretty far off Matt Stafford. I just don't like the fact that he keeps getting fuck. He keeps breaking his fucking back. Like I, I don't know something about being like 33 and breaking your back just is is not not a plus for the longevity. And uh, obviously that affects uh, affects everybody else in the offense. And Marvin Jones is getting old and keeps getting injured too. Like I don't know. Just seems too good to be true. So for whatever reason, I'm just going to stay away from Marvin Jones. Not good analysis, but that's what I got for you. It's, it's more of a gut feeling on that one. Don't take Deontay. Don't take Deontay. Honestly, the smart move sh would probably be taking a guy like Carson Wentz or Daniel Jones or something. But we're not smart here. We're dumb as fuck. I, what do we do? What do we do? Nah, I'm actually... I'm going to take another quarterback here. I'll go with Wentz. Uh, Wentz is a guy... I, t I talked about this. I was on the Breakout Finder podcast. It's one of the, the better dynasty podcasts out there. If you guys don't listen to it, I'd go check it out with Nate Liss um, and, and Ryan Lopes. They uh, they invited me on last night to film, and I, I believe they put the podcast episode up today in iTunes as well as on YouTube. And we talked about Carson Wentz. And Wentz is not a guy I'm very decisive about. He's a guy that I think comes with a lot of risk, but a lot of upside, of course. I think that when you have players like Wentz, where the range of outcomes is extremely wide, you're most likely to be wrong about the way you feel about that player, right? We're all uh, objectively, if the range of outcomes is this fucking wide for a player, like compared to this wide for a player, if it's this, if it's this wide, you have to find your fucking range of outcome in there, what you think is going to happen. And the likelihood of that hitting is much smaller because the range of outcomes is wider. So you have to understand that the wider the range of outcomes is for a player, the more likely you are to be wrong about your prediction on him. So those are the guys I diversify in my lineups. Um, like 
you know, Carson Wentz is not a guy I'm targeting in all my leagues, but he's not a guy I'm fading either. So I'll draft him in one league and then fade him in the next two or three and then maybe draft him again because his upside is there. In that range of outcomes, his upside is very, very high. It's like, you know, quarterback three, four, five in fantasy. And if that does hit, if the higher range of outcomes does hit for a guy like Carson Wentz, I'm going to be super excited that I do own him somewhere. And if I faded him everywhere, then of course I'm going to be disappointed in it. And that's why you dive. That's why you diversify your teams, man. Especially in best ball. If you if if you put the ten bucks in, or you get you know you use a promo code BDGE, you got fifteen, and you end up doing fifteen drafts. Don't just draft all the same guys. Diversify the portfolio, man. I'm giving you fucking market tips. I'm giving you asset tips. I'm giving you business tips. I'm giving you fucking frosted tips. What up, though? Okay, 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 okay. Man, these drafts take a lot out of me. They're long, hopefully informational, hopefully valuable. I mean, if you guys are enjoying this, I don't know if you are, but if you are, uh, a thumbs up would be very, very much appreciated. Literally, all you got to do is scroll down on your phone for like literally half a second and hit the thumbs up button. It lets YouTube know that you enjoy these. Thus, I'll keep making them. I, last year, I did a mock draft every single Friday. So if you guys do enjoy these, if you want to see more of these, sometimes it'll be on Drafters. Sometimes it'll be on Fantasy Pros. Sometimes it'll be on Yahoo. It'll never be on ESPN. So shout out to all the ESPN people out there. Uh, let me know down below. You know, Comment. Let me know what you guys want to see. Let me know how you feel about the mock drafts, if they're helpful, if they're just fucking annoying as shit and I, I should stop talking. Because obviously you're listening to me talk for about 60 minutes straight. And it hurts my own fucking brain. All right. So I am back on the board. I mean, Devonta Freeman, how are you going to take a player who's not even on a damn team? He's about to retire. So I have all my starting lineups filled, but that absolutely does not mean you shouldn't be taking best player available. Because again, best ball, they start the best players for you. See, and now here's the problem with all the people that faded, um, with all the people that faded running backs. And we'll get to that in a sec. We'll see if there's any wide receivers that I really like to left on the board. Man, Golden Tate is a guy that I don't understand why he's getting faded so hard. I'm taking Golden Tate over Darius Slayton, I think, in best ball. He came in like halfway through and was so, so involved in the offense. Like Daniel Jones absolutely loved him. And Golden Tate was still explosive and making plays and fucking doing his thing. So I'm I'm like super confused as to why Golden Tate is going under the radar. He had like multiple, a lot of very big games, super involved in the offense and just making plays. And uh, he's a guy that I, I've been getting in like the 10th, 11th round of best ball drafts, like week in and week out and day in and day out and draft in and draft out. It's crazy to me. I, I I don't know. Someone someone let me know why I'm so unreasonably high on Golden Tate. Like the off the, the involvement in the offense is just crazy to me. Uh, we do not have a tight end yet, so I will probably dip back into the tight end pool unless I see an incredible value here at running back, which is not a thing because that doesn't exist after like the fifth round. I'm gonna go Dallas Goddard. I think he's the surest thing here to produce week in and week out, even if it is just like six to seven points a game. Uh, I like his involvement in that offense, and I do have Carson Wentz. So on good weeks where they connect for touchdowns, one or two, uh, that will be inserted into my lineup as a very big, big, big plus. So let's go back to those those uh, lineups that did end up fading wide receiver. So West Toronto went Michael Thomas first, Chris Godwin, Odell, Devontae Parker, Russell Wilson. He starts picking in the sixth round and he rips off four straight running backs, which I, I, I kind of like the strategy here. David Montgomery, Kareem Hunt, Philip Lindsay, Sonny Michelle. I think those are really, really, really good picks. Uh, we'll have to see how this plays out. I don't know if those guys, because as I said, the running backs are the single position that give you, you know, the largest advantage in fantasy football. Um, so if you don't have that top end uh, competition or that top end production, excuse me, uh, you're going to have trouble competing with the best teams in the league. So I'm not a fan of the strategy overall, but I do think he executed it well. If we look at uh, heights, he went Adams, he went Lamar Jackson, Zachers, Mark Andrews, Cortland Sutton, Robert Woods, all good value picks. The only running backs he has on his roster through 11 rounds are J.K. Dobbins and Darrell Henderson. Like this could work out really, really, really poorly. Obviously, the J.K. Dobbins pick is interesting because he has upside, but the chance of him hitting that upside in year one is extremely low. So the production that Height's going to get out of his running backs are going to be probably very, 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 very poor. And I'm assuming his, you know, his strategy is going to start being, uh, let me rack up the guys like Alexander Madison and Tony Pollard's and those kind of guys. Uh, because they have like upside if someone gets hurt. Like I, I never draft guys based on if the guy ahead of them gets hurt. Because if you're gonna if you're gonna value a player 
relative to other players in terms of the guy heading them getting hurt, then you also have to like if you're like, oh, Alexander Madison, if if Dalvin Cook gets hurt, then Alexander Madison steps up. But then then when you're comparing whether or not to draft Madison to another player, you also have to take that consideration. It's like having a common denominator in which you need to cross out the common denominator in all equations, because then if you look at one player about how someone gets hurt, you have to do that with every other player. I don't know if any of that fucking made sense. Yep, exactly. As I said, he's going to go. He's going to target guys like Alexander Madison. And I'm sure he like was deciding between Tony Pollard and Alexander Madison. So I understand the strategy as well. Pick a lot of high upside um, guys where if someone gets injured, but it's just, you know, that's a lot to bank on. He could he could easily end up finishing dead last in this league just because he's he's getting no running back production. So he goes with Matt Breda. I love that Matt Breda pick. Damn, I forgot he was available all the way down here in the 12th round. Matt Breda going over to Miami. Ooh. Uh, I might grab my second tight end here because I only have Dallas Goddard. And I think real quickly, the production at this position will probably fall off. I'm going to go with Ian Thomas here. I mean, Ian Thomas with Greg Olson gone. And again, Joe Brady, my fucking boy. Uh, we saw production out of basically every position there at LSU. I mean, from the Stephen Sullivan's to the Thaddeus Mosses, all the tight ends produce like... I think everyone in this Carolina offense is going to get enough volume to uh, be pretty good, except for Curtis Sam, who sucks. But yeah, I think I think you stack up Goddard and Ian Thomas, and I, I, the number of players that you pick at a given position, I think a lot has to do with how heavily you invest into them. Like these guys are eleventh and twelfth round picks for me, so of course I might need more tight ends because I didn't invest an early pick on him. But had I went with like George Kittle in the second round. I wouldn't feel any pressure to get a third tight end behind these other two guys or behind George Kittle and whoever I took as my second guy because I already have one guy who's securing me high-end production. Um, let's see. So Tevin Coleman goes off the board. I think Tevin Coleman's a good pick down here too, especially with – where does Mostert go off the board? Where are you? Yeah, Mostert going off the board – seven rounds before Coleman is fucking criminal. Guys, if we want to talk about running back by committees, like you're never going to be, be able to project who comes out of the San Francisco backfield and produces on a week over week basis, which is, I guess, not a bad strategy in best ball. He got Mostert and Tevin Coleman on his team. I, I think that's actually a very, very smart strategy there. Um, but in season long, I'm not, I'm not trying to draft Mostert in the sixth round because you have to choose what weeks to play and what weeks not to play him. And I tend to steer away from those guys. So, uh, I'm back up. I only have three running backs, and I'm going to make this pick just to piss off hype. You like this? You like this? <coughs> he wanted him so bad. I could tell. I could tell. He's fucking throwing air haymakers behind his computer screen right now, I bet. He's doing it. I hope he tweets at me and says, you fucking cunt. I can't believe you took Tony Ballard. Tony Ballard. Skirt. No way. <laughs> um, yeah, go follow me on Twitter or some shit. My socials are linked right below me, I believe. Nick underscore BDG on Twitter. Uh, my Instagram handle, Nick Ercolano. Don't send me no damn fucking Instagram sit start questions, though. We have a we have a brand Instagram if you want to do that at Big Dogs Fantasy, but I think the best place for real the best place to engage with other fantasy football peoples from the Big Dogs community as well as myself and Noah and Mike and Scott and all those guys is absolutely the Discord channel. Can't wait to see who Height takes here. Come on, Height, you little bitch. I'm just kidding. I love you, but uh, it's it's fun targeting you and destroying your life and putting you in a coffin right now. Oh no, which running back has the most upside? None because they all fucking stink. Maybe we'll go Boston Scott here. He's pissed. He's like, everybody sucks, man. Everybody fucking stinks, bro. Royce Freeman. Love that. Love that you had to take Royce Freeman, who has no upside. Love that. You love to see that. So this is particularly the reason why you don't fade running backs early. That sh see, this is why. Like, who's saying ringing my doorbell? BRB. I left my keys in my door like a fucking asshole. Who did Jack Leonard take? Who the fuck is this? That's not a good pick, Jack. Whoever that is, it's not a good pick. Get off my screen. Oh, my God. Drafters has a... I mean, they're the best we got right now, but they, they definitely have some work to do. Get off my screen, yo. 
I gotta re refresh this shit. Can we see who we took now? Oh, it must have been a defense because that's the color there. Okay, fair enough. Uh, he went Baltimore defense. First one off the board. Um, what do we got here? We're getting towards the end of the draft. We have five rounds remaining. Let's talk about some deeper sleepers, some DP sleepers. I actually might grab a couple of defenses here because, again, just like with tight ends or just like with quarterbacks, you don't want – it's not like a season long where you want to draft one uh, one defense. Like you want to have at least two uh, on your team. Although it's a little bit di different for defense because with quarterbacks, like if you have one or tight ends, if you have one, that guy gets hurt, you're getting a zero there. Every single week a defense is going to put up points. Some of them are going to be negative though. So you do want to uh, because – why does it not let me click anything? You do want to, <coughs> because there are going to be some weeks where defenses just shit the bed, and uh, and they don't put up any points for you, and you don't want a negative in that column. Uh, 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 uh. It's Drew Lock went all the way at one sixty two. That's insane. I should just fade quarterbacks honestly in super flex leagues here until uh, until like all the way in the last round. Uh, I think we were talking about, oh, Kyle's team. So he started off with Dalvin Cook, Josh Jacobs, Clyde Edwards, Hilaire. Love that start. And the reason you do a start like that is because, oh, he's the motherfucker who stole Deontay Johnson, huh? Uh, is because you can get Cooper Cup in the fourth round. You can get Terry McLaurin in the, in the fifth round. I hate AJ Green, but I mean, if you, <laughs> if you like him, if you believe in it. <coughs> Woo! Tell you what, <coughs> BRB. Huh. What do you mean I'm fucking back? I never fucking... You don't fucking pull on bike on me. I'm fucking back. I'm back. And they took fucking... Ch Ugh. Ugh. I felt like fucking Ben Siller from Dodgeball right there. Oh, he makes me bleed my own fucking blood. I'm back. I'm bike. You don't fucking tell me I'm bike. <clears throat> How they auto-pick? I was gone for two seconds. It said I was eight picks away. This is ridiculous. This is fucking... I'm, I'm suing everybody involved. Uh... I wouldn't have taken Chase Edmonds, but I actually don't. I don't necessarily hate that pick. I'm going to take a defense here, probably. See what we got. Um, why can't I filter down by defenses only? Man, drafters, drafters. We got some work to do. So I got so many things plugged into my fucking computer, it makes this shit run slow. Uh, there we go. We filter by defense. The way I look at defense is I'm actually going to go with Pittsburgh over New England. No, I'm not. That'd be ignorant. We're just going to go with New England, the best defense in the NFL as of last year. <clears throat> um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. It, what happens is that I, I feel like I choke actually every, every time I do a mock draft because I just talk for 60 straight minutes. <clears throat> And it makes my throat feel like the fucking Sahara Desert. And then I choke and pass away. I'm going to end up dying during a mock draft, I feel like. Put that shit on my, on my tombstone. Died doing a mock draft. Mock draft death. Died at the 12.05. Put that on my fucking tombstone. Died at the 12.05. If I pass away in a live draft. Didn't I just make my pick? Why am I still on the fucking clock? pick now i just did bench all right well for the sake of drafters because i'm working with them i'm not i don't want to sit here and make their platform look uh you, you get the point um but they do have an app the app runs smoothly but there are more features on the desktop you can create your own leagues you can invite your friends to, to play in these leagues you can uh you can customize them as much as you want. I'm, I'm telling you, you can do it one quarterback if you want. You can do it half PPR, full PPR standard. Yada yada bit about it. Apple melon pie, toenail pie, watermelon pie. You guys remember that fucking video? What video is that even from? One guy who's going off about fucking pies. 
I don't fucking know. All right. Well, uh, come draft me. Come join me on Drafters. Drafters.com. Use the promo code BDGE. When y'all sign up, you'll get an extra five bucks. And make sure you add me. Add me on all the damn socials. But add me on Drafters, most importantly. Nick BDGE. When you sign up, come add me. I'll accept your friend requests if you're cool as shit. You got to send me fucking. Actually, never mind. I was going to say something really ignorant there, but I figure I have to stop doing that for the sake of the brand. Okay. I'm out. I love y'all. Hit that thumbs up button if you enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. And I will see y'all later.